Welcome to Older Moms, celebrating the joy of motherhood later in life. Having children after 35 comes with unexpected challenges. Join us in this exciting, simultaneously terrifying journey. Now, please welcome your host, Dr. B, who became a first time mom at the age of 40. Welcome, Mama Crew, to another busy, chaotic, and challenging, always exciting and beautiful day of an older mom like you. So this pandemic has brought about such unexpected challenges, right? And while I could speak about many things, I think today I'm going to concentrate on talking about the challenges that I've had to face with my now five-year-old son, Bug. Now, as you've heard me speak before, Bug is incredibly full of, oh my goodness, energy. Energy, just an incredible amount of energy that has to be encapsulated in 1,600 square feet in this tiny little condo where there is no backyard. I think up until this happened, I had fallen victim to the idea that boys were easier than girls. And now I've come to the realization boys are just as challenging as girls, just in a completely different way. So what do I mean by that? Well, for starters, Bug is a charmer, okay? Oh my God, this boy can lay it on thick. As soon as he knows that I'm about to reprimand him for something, or he realizes that I'm angry, whether with him or somebody else, he lays on the charm and he lays it on thick. Oh, mommy, are you tired? What can I do to help you? Mom, I love you so much. Let me hug on you. Let me kiss you. Even though two seconds ago, I couldn't stand to be near you. And of course, oh my goodness, how many months are we into this? Lockdown to semi-lockdown and started in January, February, March, April, May, June, July, oh, August, eight months, <laughs> eight months. But of course, we're blessed. Very lucky. No one in our family has gotten sick. We've taken lots and lots of precautions, but it's come at a price. There's so little that we can do in the situation. And we're all going crazy. We have major cabin fever. We're not used to being this inactive. And as a result, tempers are flaring. Not just from us, the adults, the parents. We try to keep it under control. But also from the kids. The kids lose that every once in a while. And it's normal and it's natural. And we have to understand that and help them through it. But holy cacanoli. I mean, there's days when we can barely tolerate each other. And as I said, he really knows how to put on the charm, which is a good thing because he's driving me crazy almost every single day. He's jumping up and down constantly. Of course, there's days when I can do the Simon Says, run up the stairs, run down the stairs, run around the couch thing and tire him out just a little bit. But given that he is a self-recharging battery. I mean, he would do great in The Matrix. Keanu Reeves would have loved him, or at least the bad guys in the movie would have loved him. Um, It's not enough. It's never enough. And even when I think I've tired him out, you know, I make him go outside and ride his bike. We got him a bike for his birthday. And I take him out. Now, here he is, my rechargeable battery, okay? He definitely inherited my Energizer Bunny battery. He just doesn't want to ride this bike. He doesn't want to. He knows that his sisters have electric bikes. He's too young for one. And he doesn't want to. Just doesn't want to. It's terrible getting him to ride around. Forget the complex. Just around the block. Okay. I'm so tired. Oh, mom. Why are you making me do this? But sometimes I push through it. Okay. I have to admit, midway through the circle, 
I'm losing my mind thinking, why am I doing this to myself? Because he just doesn't want to do it and he will fight it every step of the way. And that's the thing, right? It's not just them, it's also us. We're also stuck. We're also dealing with cabin fever. How do we deal with them being moody when we are dealing with our own feelings? It's such an overwhelming situation right now. And we're all just desperately trying to do the best that we can by our children and ourselves. But as he's whining for the 50 million times, sometimes I want to choke the living daylights out of myself and wonder, why did I ever decide that I needed or wanted another child? Of course, then he smiles at me and he does something cute. And I melt like butter in the microwave. What can I tell you? I'm a sucker for those big brown eyes and that wide, gorgeous smile. So here I am. I forced him to go around the circle in our condos. And he swears he's exhausted. And I think... Oh, my goodness. Okay. Finally, I can take him back in. I'll let him watch TV for a little bit. And I'll get some of my homeschool grading done. So, true story. I sit him on the couch. He's watching TV. I am maybe 10 steps away from him when he starts flipping over the couch. Now, mind you, I have told him, my husband has told him, the girls have told him more than a hundred billion times, do not jump on the couch, do not flip on the couch, don't do that, you're going to get hurt. And he falls off the couch. And I didn't hear it. I didn't hear a bam. You know, when you have wooden floors, you hear it, but here's tile. And I didn't hear it. He goes into the bathroom and he's trying to deal with the blood because, oh yes, there's blood. Tons and tons of blood. It's sprayed on the wall. It's sprayed on the toilet seat. It's all over the sink. And then all of a sudden I hear his. <laughs> but one of the problems with Bug is his fake cry sounds just like his real cry. And I knew he didn't want to sit down to watch TV. So I thought he was fake crying. And 30 seconds later I hear. <laughs> Again, and now I'm like, oh, shit. So I go and I ask him what's going on because he's in the bathroom locked door. And he says, I'm bleeding. Now, another habit that he has is he picks his nose constantly. I don't know. What can I tell you? It seems to be an age thing. All my kids have gone through that. And he will pick it until he bleeds. So I thought that was it. And he knows he's going to get in trouble. Okay, let me rephrase what I mean by trouble. Me and his dad are going to sit down and talk to him and tell him he's not supposed to be doing that. It's not good for his little nose. And so that's the extent of the trouble. But he still fakes cries every time that he gets the nosebleeds. So I open the door preparing myself for this. When I see this looks like somebody's been murdered in the bathroom. Now I'm wondering, what the hell did he do to himself this time? Again, back to the nose thing. And he says, I fell off the couch. I just rolled off of it, he says. And now I'm looking and he's cut his lip. He has blood coming from the side of his mouth, from the inside of his mouth, where he's cut his lip on the inside. And he's cut his mouth on the outside with his teeth. And he's bleeding from his nose. Now, fortunately for me, he's the fourth child, right? So I've been through this with the three other kids. And I know that even though it looks like copious amount of bleeding and you think that they're dying, fortunately, one of the benefits of being an older mom is you don't need to panic because you know it's not a big deal. Okay? So I'm putting pressure on his nose dealing with the cuts, cleaning them up to see exactly what is going on, how much of this is, you know, an actual need for concern, how much of it is just scandalous blood. And I realize, okay, I've gotten the lips, that's good. But no matter how much amount of pressure I apply to the nose, the blood's still rolling. 
So now I'm screaming for my husband, screaming as in loudly, not as in panicking, thinking, oh shit, this is another trip to the emergency with this boy. I mean, him and Emmy, Emmy being one of my 13-year-old twins, seem to love the emergency room. So here we go, a pandemic. We don't really want to go to an emergency room. We call Nemours, that's the children's hospital here in the Florida area that we live in, and find out where there's an urgent care and we take him there. So the doctor looks at him. He's like, you're an older mom. What a nice compliment, right? No wonder you're not so panicked. But he looks at it and he says, well, it could be broken might be broken. We don't have the ability to do x-rays. We can send you to the emergency room. But do you really want to go to the emergency room? I mean, it stopped bleeding. The swelling is going up, but that's normal. And so I'm trying to discern what the doctor is telling me. Are you telling me we don't really need to go to the emergency room? We probably don't need to go to the emergency room. There's a greater danger in going to the emergency room than not going to the emergency room. But you don't want to say that to me because of the potential for liability. And this is one of those times when I'm thinking, oh, just say what you mean. But at the same time, they're not that concerned. So my husband and I are looking at each other thinking, okay, what's the right thing to do? We decide to go home. Now, fortunately, I have a friend who is a very sought-after pediatrician in California. And I call him and we FaceTime and he's laughing. He's like, oh, the nose is one of those places where you even move it, hit it a little bit, it's just going to be copious amount of blood. You could fill up a swimming pool. He's like, I sit down, have him sleep, sort of sitting up, and let's see where he's in the morning. We'll look at it again because I don't really want you going into an emergency room right now. And that's that. I was even, should I give him Tylenol? He's like, if you want to, but if he's not asking for it, if he's not complaining, you don't need to. So fine. We go with that advice. And I really thought by the next day, his face was going to blow up like a balloon. But no. Actually, the swelling was down. I had stayed up all night icing his nose, icing his face, and he only had a minor bruise, which is another amazing thing. He seems indestructible. My little bug is absolutely indestructible. I think it's uh, nature's or God's way of ensuring that humanity survives. He makes little boys indestructible. But, of course, I spent an agonizing night the whole time thinking, okay, if this pandemic wasn't going on, I would have taken him to the emergency room. What if I made the wrong decision? (sighs) It's endless, isn't it? Absolutely endless. The self-doubt as a mom, the constant concern that you have to do the right thing, but you're never absolutely certain that you did it. Even when you're doing your absolute best or what you believe is your absolute best, because here I really was weighing the risks. At the time, Osceola County had 560 cases of COVID, and I thought that was a big deal. Now we're at 7,000 something, close to 8,000 the last time I looked. Bigger deal. And we're just trying to mitigate the risks both for our children and ourselves, because as older parents, we are in the high-risk group. So the whole night, I was wondering if I had done the right thing. The next morning, the child's acting like he's fine. I feel like I'm dying because I didn't get enough sleep. But I'm happy. I'm happy that he's okay. And I think, well, we'll see how the days go. And of course, I FaceTime my friend several times during the week. And Bug is fine. Bug is fine. So, is there a takeaway from this? No, no takeaway. Just that we survived. He survived. I survived. My husband survived. Because, of course, if mama ain't happy, husband definitely is not happy. And the whole time that I'm concerned, I'm expressing my concerns to whom? My poor husband, who never gets enough sleep. But now that 
I think of it, it's only fair. If I can't sleep because of the kids, he shouldn't be able to sleep either. That's my motto. But that isn't the only challenge with Bug. My Energizer Bunny, my self-recharging battery, loses all energy the moment he has to do his share of the shores. Now, mind you, his shares of the shores are helping take the trash out, which means taking the trash bags that are in the small trash cans all over the house, putting them in a bigger trash can, and then putting new bags in. And suddenly he looks like a wet spaghetti noodle. I'm so tired. What kind of a mom are you? How can you do this to a little boy? Ugh, seriously? There's days when he makes me laugh and there's days when I want to just throttle him. <laughs> are you kidding me? Just take out the trash. But he does. He looks like a wet spaghetti noodle to his hands loosen up. Oh. And then the injustice of it all. Why do I have to do it? Why can't my sisters do it? They're older. Well, his sisters have different responsibilities. Loading and unloading the dishwasher, vacuuming. Um, You know, there's three of them. It's a small condo. They can handle it. I do all the laundry, all the cooking. Although now I'm letting the girls do their own lunches. But taking the trash out is doing his fair share for the family. We all have our responsibilities. However, he wet noodles it. And his responsibility becomes my responsibility or one of the girl's responsibilities because we have to follow him around making sure that he's doing it. As he bitterly complains about his exhaustion the whole way through. Of course, as soon as he's done taking out the trash, he's full of energy again and doesn't want to sit down, certainly doesn't want to do his homeschool work or ride the bike. And again, I ask myself, why? Why? What did I ever do to deserve this? And then I remember my mother saying, this is exactly the kind of child I was. Okay, I'm making up for making my mother suffer. And that's always kind of funny, isn't it? As an older mom, when you remember what your mother used to say you did or didn't do, and now karma has gotten you. And you're sitting there laughing at yourself. The other big challenge with him lately has been that I got him a Kindle. I got him a Kindle so that he could play educational games and he could read, which he does. But I've had to put a lock on YouTube because the boy is addicted to YouTube videos. And these are most insipid YouTube videos that you can imagine. There's one of a dad playing with his two-year-old and his four-year-old video games. It is the most inane and ridiculous thing. It makes me crave the Teletubby days. Remember Teletubbies? Ooh, ha -ha. Oh, I thought those days were bad. No, this is worse. And when I take it away from Bug, he finds new and creative ways of getting around it. Now he has these long bathroom sessions and comes out with the Kindle. So now I have to be on top of that too. Because of course, the kid throws you a curveball. Now you have to learn to catch it, right? And I think that's one of the things that's wonderful about being an older mom, because we tend to be more patient about these things. But on the other hand, it's still just as annoying. It doesn't matter what age you are. It's like, why? So I have to limit his Kindle time. I have to limit his TV time because this is the kind of junk that he likes to watch. And there's a lot of fake hitting on these shows, which leads to real hitting. And his sisters do not appreciate it. Neither does his dog, Shamey. We named his little Chih Tzu Shamey for Amy and Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory. When they first start dating, they're called Shamey. And we just love the Big Bang Theory. And our favorite characters. Well, no, I can't say they were our favorite characters. We love them all. What can I tell you? We were devastated when the series ended. The whole family really enjoys it. So, Bug and Jamie. 
Bug loves Jamie. Jamie does not love Bug. <laughs> okay. He wants to hug on her. He wants to play. And 30 minutes into it, even though she's still a puppy, she's done. And it's not that he's too rough with her. He doesn't try to hit her. He doesn't try to bite her. The girls try to do those things when they were that age. No, he just wants to love on her. But it reminds me of that old Warner Brothers cartoon with that, I think he was a giant or something who liked to pet things and would squeeze them and hug them and love them. And the poor things were just like, let me out of here. That's our poor Shamey. Our poor Shamey is tortured because she's too loved on. So I have to pretend to give Shamey timeouts. Shamey has been bad, so Shamey needs a timeout. And boy, let me tell you, Shamey appreciates the timeouts. It's such a nice rest period for her. You know what I mean? <laughs> I wish I could take a timeout. But no. No. Although, that's not fair. Because we do take a timeout in the middle of the day, every day. Blissfully, he naps. Now, before you say, if you didn't let him nap, he wouldn't have so much energy. No. It doesn't matter. Whether he naps or doesn't nap, he's still my little energizer bunny. So the nap is not as much for him as it is for me. I'm 53. I have a whole bunch of health problems and it helps me keep up with him. Sometimes you have a nap for them and sometimes you have a nap for you. And older moms, let's face it, we have them nap for us. We need that nap, ladies. We need that now. So, if you share an imperfect journey to motherhood, please subscribe to our blog or podcast. For link and resources, please visit our website. Till next time, toodles. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Celebrating the Joy of Motherhood Later in Life. Head over to oldermomsblog.com for more information and resources. That's oldermomsblog.com. Until next time.